Chris Jericho versus Nick Gage. Welp. They brought in Nick Gage, and they had him do what Nick Gage does. They didn't water down anything. They may have told him no cursing. But other than that, do your stuff. You know, what's funny is, is I believe that Jericho put the entire match together. I would not doubt that for one second. I think. I mean, Jericho. if I were Jericho, I'd want to put the whole match together. I mean, if I, that's if, my if call. I, if I was Jericho and somebody else put this match together, <laughs> this match doesn't happen. I, 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 I pull rank. I find some way out of this. So Nick Gage begins the match with a pizza cutter in his hand, and he reaches out, and it's a sharp pizza cutter, pizza cutter, and he slashes Jericho's arm open. That was the opening spot. MJF is on commentary. He is the absolute best. He gets himself over. He gets these guys over. He gets Jericho over, Nick Gage over. Under the guise of burying Jericho, of course, but it, it, he didn't really bring him over as a bigger star than ever. He's entertaining. He's funny. He's thoughtful. He's, he's perfect. It's not hard to have the time of your life when two dudes are in the ring beating the shit out of each other with pizza cutters and glass and light tubes, and you're talking. So they start pulling the light tubes and Floyd the baseball bat out. Guys are Both guys are already bleeding from the head. I don't even know how. I think Jericho got posted, I guess. I don't know. But <laughs> then it happened, and I probably wouldn't have even noticed it watching live, but watching Thursday night... As Nick Gage is running a pizza cutter that we have already established to be sharp, unless it's a, no, not the same pizza cutter. But he's running it over Jericho's forehead as it goes to picture in picture, and a Domino's pizza ad appears on the other screen. Yes, I laughed. I laughed a lot at that. So eventually the picture in picture goes away. When it comes back, there's a pane of glass in the ring over two chairs. They're fighting over this, and Jericho is the... Top rope, Rana threw the plane of glass, and now there's shards of glass in the ring, and chunks of it went flying into the crowd. You could see light tubes get busted all over everywhere. There's glass in the ring. Jericho's back is all slashed open. Chris Jericho is 50 years old. Doing yes. This. But eventually, uh, so, so Gage is using the solo light tube. He's either broken the solo light tube over Jericho's head or shoulders, or at one point he broke them over his knee and they began to jab at Jericho and they forked it with him like Abdullah the Butcher with a fork. But then it's time for the ultimate weapon. He finds the four light tubes taped together. And he brings this into the ring. But when he turns around, Jericho spits mist in his eyes like the great Muda. He grabs the light tubes and breaks them over Gage's head. He hits the Judas effect and he wins. This was all completely insane. I still honestly can't believe they did this match on network TV, but as you noted, it got viewers, and it was certainly not forgettable. The, like the, the NX, I, I don't want anyone to do this match. This kind of match is not everyone's thing, and not everyone should be doing it. But the NXT match was two dudes exchanging holds. I'm going to remember this carnage and warfare for a long, long time. Well, you know, I don't want to talk forever about this because Dave talked about, a lot about it last night. And we have learned, by the way, that uh, allegedly, I presume it's true, but I only, like, the website that it came from. It I was mean, not Forbes. It was not it's, NBC News. It's it's one website, and I didn't hear it anywhere else, but allegedly Domino's was... Uh, I, I think they use the term disavow in the headline or something like that or whatever. But, uh, you know, I presume that I, I can tell you for a fact that a lot of people that don't like AEW did immediately start contacting Domino's after the Domino's commercial after the pizza cutter spot. So my guess is that it is true that Domino's probably was not happy with the the feedback that they got. And maybe they'll pull their ads. I don't know. I do know that uh, Paps Blue Ribbon immediately uh, started tweeting at AEW that they want to sponsor AEW <laughs> if Domino's pulls their uh, sponsorship. So, I mean, I, 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 it's TNT. If you do something like this and you run off sponsors, you have to stop doing it. That's, that's the bottom line. Yep. I don't know how many sponsors are really going to be run off. There's part of me that wonders, I mean, you ever watch TNT? I mean, they do. They air movies where people you, are killed the movie, and they die, 
And, the, like, all sorts of bloody, horrible things happen. The movie that aired immediately after Dynamite is built around a man torturing and murdering several people. Okay, so, like, you can sponsor that movie, but you're worried that there's some blood in... I mean, maybe it is. I don't... I, listen, I don't know, okay? Maybe you'll run off sponsors. Maybe you won't. I mean, if you do, then you stop doing it. If you don't, then you do it every now and then. It's not my favorite thing, okay? I could tell you that my big concern was human safety... I hate light tubes because they're full of all of this shit. But as it turns out, they they gimmicked the light tubes. I, I believe that they they uh, they got all that stuff in it, that phosphorus or whatever. Mm -hmm. They removed the phosphorus, so it was a legitimate light tube. But all the powder and shit that you get worried is gonna you're gonna inhale it and get cancer. They got rid of all of that stuff. So there was some glass. I don't like glass. I don't like puncture wounds. But they did. I don't, I, Vinny, I would suspect it was a blade job and not a sharp pizza cutter. Could be wrong. But uh, many times uh, in AEW, sometimes chairs, uh, sometimes. That's true. Guys bleed on you know, the show a lot. When Jericho fell off the deal onto the cardboard boxes, I mean, they do gimmick a lot of things. They do not gimmick everything. When, uh, when Moxley went through that barbed wire board, uh, like a month after his child was born, that was 100% legit barbed wire that punctured the shit out of him. So some of this stuff is real. Some of the stuff is gimmicked. So I know they gimmicked some of the stuff in this match. It wasn't quite as horrifying as it seemed, I but mean, it was a bloodbath. I, I mean, mean, yeah, it, it, it may have been a blade job on the arm, but I would rather take a sharp pizza cut of the arm than a broken light tube to the back and bleed everywhere. So yes. if you're going to do the one, why don't do the other? And as far as like drawing, they, they didn't drive off viewers with this match. I mean, no. the match did the second highest quarter of the entire show. Uh, they didn't run off viewers with the Moxley match where he fell into barbed wire. I mean, perhaps ultimately you you will drive off viewers. But if you look at the viewership of the show, if you look at the quarter hours, if you look at where they are here, a uh, week after the a couple of weeks after the Moxley match, I mean, they're still doing huge numbers. Yes, you don't want to do too much of this. Yes, you don't want a product that you're going to drive off people in droves. Yes, you don't want to drive off sponsors. But like. If you don't have an ego about it, and I don't think that the people that run this company and work for this company have an ego, if you do something and you drive off sponsors and you find out you're driving off viewers, they are going to stop doing it. So, not my favorite kind of match, but I don't see a huge amount of evidence that this is a massive negative for AEW. Do I think that they should make this a regular thing? No. Do I think it's okay to do it every now and then? Sure. Should it mostly be on pay-per-view? Yes. That's my take on it. So MJF, of course, is very disappointed that Nick Gage has lost. But he declares labor number three will be a match in which you, in which you must hit a maneuver off the top rope to win. <laughs> yes. So if we're going from this to a move where you must hit a top a match where you must hit a top rope move. He then shows a promo, yes, from November of 2019, pre-pandemic, mostly. He shows a promo where, with himself and Jericho. It was the first time when Jericho was asking, do you want to be in the inner circle? And then and Jeff said, do you want me in the inner circle? And they, neither one would admit it. But at some point, Jericho mentions something about, well, he, while he was wrestling Juventud Guerrera when MJF's parents were doing whatever. MJF says, I have no idea who Juventud Guerrera is, and Jericho says, Google him. And we cut back here to this arena in 2021, and MJF says, well, I did Google him. And one of your most hated rivals, The Juice, is coming back to TNT. And they cut to Jericho. He's bleeding everywhere. He had his pain maker makeup on. It's running everywhere. He's slumped in the corner. You've never seen... A sadder looking Chris Jericho than knowing he has to have a match with Hoovy. <laughs> so uh Jay's here was in the building. He said we were very upset that Hoovy didn't come out. And uh I don't blame you. Dude, no way in the world would I have brought Hoovy out for this show. <laughs> like Hoovy's coming in for one night, brother. And uh not just because Hoovy only needs to be in one night, but also uh, half the half the fun of of Hoovy is what in the hell does Hoovy look like in 2021? I haven't I seen this guy, and you know I've been watching a lot of uh, of Lucha. I mean, 
That's part of the gimmick here. We're going to see this guy for the first time on U.S. national television in 21 years or whatever. And don't bring him out here. you got to tune in next week to see this guy and see this match and see what they can do. Roman Reigns versus Edge for the title. Sorry, Brian. What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> got a text. My bad. It plays a song for a text? Brian. My other question is, why isn't it Pearl Jam? Brian, move along. Who here in the chat can name that tune? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's this person I'm says it sounds like Faith. With that one guy? <laughs> we got to have Faith. Guy. George Michael. George Michael, that's right. Yes. I was going to say Shawn Michaels. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.